Let's go Hollywood backstage and see this unique and fascinating place called Hollywood. I take responsibility. Virtue signaling, the favorite pastime of celebrities everywhere. Right up there with P. Diddy parties or cucking out to the Chinese government. Virtue signaling has been a regular practice in Hollywood for the majority of its history, but there's a 24-7 display of it in all its glorious cringe thanks to social media. Opening an app at any minute brings with it the threat of a celebrity caring about the most important thing ever of the day. It extends beyond their personal accounts when their careers are riding on towing a studio's political line when promoting a film. It's a downward spiral for an industry that still hasn't recovered from the pandemic. Last year's $8.9 billion total is lower than 20 years ago. 2004 saw a $9.1 billion domestic tally and 1.3 billion tickets sold, versus last year's 829 million tickets. With the quality of Hollywood's productions being the worst in recent memory, and competition for people's attention at an all-time high, hearing a celebrity spouting about their moral superiority, whether it's a self-aggrandizing choice or as a forced studio proxy, is the last thing most people want to hear and it's contributed to Hollywood's decline in box office and cultural perception. Issues plaguing Hollywood aren't new, but they they evolve and eventually become too big to ignore. Studios have made a number of stupid decisions contributing to their own demise. From going all in on streaming services that generate little profit that shun theaters in the process, to shoving their stars in front of cameras like hostages as they read a virtue-dripped PR ransom letter. And that ranges from John Cena to Bob Chapek, who is the head of the biggest media conglomerate in the world. It insults people's intelligence and reinforces the perception that Hollywood consists of hollow, vacuous, and out-of-touch celebrities, ready to finger-wag their way through the next media cycle, ultimately fueling audience apathy. When studios aren't having actors embarrass themselves on behalf of the company, a person in position of power like Disney's Bob Iger is fully capable of doing Doing that himself. After Pseudo retiring from his position as CEO, he was reinstated after Bob Chapek's short-lived but turbulent time as head of the company following Iger's initial departure. Chapek's time was marked by downward profits and internal political battles, but his time was so brief that any issues in profitability were because of systems put in place by Iger, well before Chapek took over. So he took the fall and Iger stepped back in to fix mistakes he himself started, when Iger succumbed to social and stakeholder pressure and allowed identity politics to take precedent in the company's media productions over actual entertainment. Propaganda, if you will. The companies faced accusations of bowing to DEI and ESG requirements forced by major stakeholders. Gee, I can't imagine why. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. It's only like 80% of companies participate in it, and over 150 Fortune 500 companies publish ESG reports. But in an election year and those becoming culturally dirty-sounding acronyms, Iger and Disney are shying away from it all after winning the battle for their board against Nelson Peltz, an activist investor who was sick of Iger's insistence on dragging the company down identity politics routes. Iger has recently said the company shouldn't be focused on messaging and should prioritize entertainment, almost as if he listened to YouTubers over the past few years and pulled a quote. But it's always best to watch what people do and not what they say, because on the same day Iger claimed victory, with the assistance of that kind of proclamation, they immediately announced the casting of Silver Surfer in the MCU, and he would be played by... Julia Garner. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to fucking kill me! Today's sponsor, Keeps, is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments that help combat hair loss. It's a convenient and affordable way for men to treat their male pattern baldness without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. It ships right to your door in discreet packaging. And I know because they ship me some free stuff. I use their thickening shampoo and conditioner, but I also use their pomade. That's how I keep my hair looking like a purposeful disaster. Keeps keeps it personal because everyone's treatment plan will look different. Your plan is unique to you and recommended by a licensed medical provider. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash moviecynic or click the link right in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash moviecynic. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and now back to it. She's playing an alternate version of the character that does have a comic book origin, even though that version of the character has appeared in all of like three comics and is best known as an Easter egg in the song title Back to Shalabal. Written by Joe Cetriani, who himself is best known for guitars and suing Coldplay. At this point, there's no reason to give a company like Disney the benefit of the doubt. 
It's a virtue signal DEI equivalent to stunt casting. And instead of bringing a refreshed set of interested eyes to an upcoming Fantastic Four movie, you have them rolling into the back of people's heads as they carry on dismissing a once great cinematic universe. It's not a bad prediction that this will end up like all the other Marvel movies that have been shit out the last four years. Because everything we're seeing says it's going to, no matter what Bob Iger says. Films themselves are foundational. Celebrities are often just pawns that push the message out. Like poor Ewan McGregor, who, from his appearance in this video, was more likely to have just seen ISIS than a Starbucks prior to hitting record. You're no Star Wars fan in my mind. We could spend hours going down Embarrassment Avenue and relive the horrors of celebrity self-awareness, or lack thereof. One of my personal favorites in recent memory is the Kendall Jenner Pepsi commercial, that upon research for this video, a recent upload of it comes with an actual cringe warning in the title. But celebrities, attention seekers as they are, don't always need a studio to mandate a cringe fest of pseudo-morality. I don't think Disney or Sony were behind the group of celebrities participating in the Imagine live stream during the pandemic, the most iconically out-of-touch moment of the last five years. If you're ever looking for a video that actually makes you cringe, that'll pull your cheeks back, hand to God. Another personal favorite of mine is Ben Affleck joining the BLM protests with his I really can't be bothered to be here face doing the talking for him about how invested he is in social justice. He even invested time making a sign, a bold move. Benedict Cumberbatch, a brilliant actor, can't help himself and seems to make sure he's photographed participating in everything of the moment, from the Me Too movement in 2018 to making sure to flash the Ukraine flag, with the six degrees of Kevin Bacon connection that his great-grandfather was born there. I too find cheap ways to to connect myself to causes. Like I was born in California and spent all of three days there my entire life. But why do you think my hair's blue half the time? I gotta rep my fellow Californians. Celebrities don't engage in dipshittery alone and neither do CEOs. Entire movie studios can do it too. By releasing crazy, blatantly racist shit they somehow think will fly. Audience tolerance for this sort of tomfoolery had peaked by the start of last year, so there was little doubt something like the American Society of Magical Negros was going to get rightfully shit on and dismissed. Surprise! It was, getting its ass kicked out of theaters after just three weeks. The entire universe could tell this movie was going to get obliterated once the trailer dropped, and the cast and director asked people not to judge the film by it, the thing that exists solely to make the movie as appealing as possible. Or how about Bros last year? That was at least well received by critics, but it's remembered more for the director engaging in cognitive dissonance when he blamed straight people for not supporting the movie after it face-planted at the box office. The studio greenlit a comedy, a genre that's effectively no longer seen as a viable theatrical option, and then niched down further by targeting the 18-34 to 34 gay male demographic and actually expected the movie to do well. Doubtful. You see this happen all over the place. It's encouraged by studios, by who they hire when they bring on activists with no interest in the actual property. The American Society movie's press tour was hilarious, with Nicole Byer, who plays Dee Dee in the film, saying, I've gone to auditions where it's a magical Negro part where it's just a friend. You don't have any backstory. It's just like she's 32 and loves her best friend. Yes, because that doesn't fit the description of thousands of characters in the side and background of movies and TV shows throughout history. It's actually foundational racism. Even even if it wasn't, I'm personally shocked the co-host of a reality baking TV series isn't given deeper roles in film to seek her teeth into. With that sort of filmography, why wouldn't you? And people in Hollywood are no strangers to indulging in virtue signaling for the sake of money. It's why Hollywood studios have engaged in propaganda from the onset. The founder of MGM made his initial bank backing Birth of a Nation, one of the most wildly racist movies ever made that was controversial even at the time of its release. In the movie Civil War, Captain America said suspiciously of the World Security Council, it's run by people with agendas, and agendas change. That can be said of Hollywood's propaganda machine, from pushing birth of a nation, to the U.S. government scrubbing over 1,500 Hollywood scripts of anything showing the U.S. in the negative light during World War II. And celebrities have a long history. Marlon Brando sent Charlene Littlefeather to accept his Best Actor Oscar for The Godfather, refusing to accept it himself and use the win as a chance for Littlefeather to speak out on the mistreatment of Native Americans by the film industry. The interesting thing to note is that Little Feather had some claps during her speech, but was also showered with boos. Excuse me. That's a stark contrast to modern-day Hollywood, where this sort of thing would garner a standing ovation because it wouldn't be authentic. It would be expected. Another contrast between past and present is the amount of studios as a whole. Studios and corporations became consumed by conglomerates. 
The film business today is run by six companies in total. And 40 years ago, 90% of media was owned by 50 different companies. Now that's dwindled down to seven. It's how you end up with a seemingly streamlined message across the board regardless of the studio. As if each independent one is following the same mandate, and it's because they are. All of Hollywood adheres to ESG standards. That's why productions feel like the same hollow mass of propagandized trash. And these standards are finally being exposed for the bullshit they've become. Even Jon Stewart somehow had the balls to call out DEI now that he's returned to The Daily Show. He had someone do it for him, but he still had his name written on it, so hey, credit where it's due. <laughs> DEI! DEI stands for Dr. Dre, Easy e and Ice Cube. Installing DEI standards, even if it was originally done with good intention, DEI standards become modern-day propaganda when it's funneled through entertainment. Elmer Davis, a CBS broadcaster in the 1940s, said, The easiest way to inject a propaganda idea into most people's minds is to let it go through the medium of an entertainment picture, when they do not really realize they're being propagandized. John Cena's shameless situation with the CCP is a wild and blatant example of a celebrity delivering a propagandized message, and companies do it too. A company like Disney is just as likely to preach a message of importance of diversity and inclusion as they are to de-emphasize Finn on the Chinese Force Awakens poster. Corporations don't give people enough credit. This satisfies a small section of very vocal people who have no interest in their product but are more interested in compliance. And it doesn't fool a discerning public who can sniff out bullshit a mile away. Just like people do with celebrities, who tend to be far more prone to embarrassing themselves than your average Joe found screaming on the street corner. As a white f***ing female, I'm f***ing pissed about it! Before the age of social media, celebrity dipshittery was relegated to crashing award shows or interviews, but now they have unfettered access to reach an audience anytime they need attention. Their daily lives are streamed for everyone to see, and instead of normalizing or humanizing anyone in that position, it exposes their self-absorbed lifestyles and personalities that often seem detached from reality. No matter what kind of political opinion they have, a celebrity can spout it, often to the detriment of their production. Whether that's fair or not is beside the point here. Tim Allen's right-wing views have stirred controversy, same as Gina Carano's, who's now embroiled in a lawsuit with Disney. On the other end, you have someone like Seth Rogen, whose insistence on never shutting the fuck up on Twitter had fans questioning how someone goes from Superbad to Santa Inc. Someone once said Seth Rogen's the kind of guy who would climb a glass wall to see what's on the other side. As much as social media has allowed celebrities to satisfy their gluttony for attention, this constant presentation of self-aggrandizing virtue signaling furthered the negative perception of Hollywood. When writers and actors went on strike, most of the world didn't seem to mind. They were scoffed at for asking support from the people who were already providing them a living. Even though the majority of people impacted by the strikes in Hollywood weren't millionaires by any stretch, the perception of what it means to be in Hollywood is so apathetic that the world collectively cried out, oh whoa, the millionaires aren't making more. During a post-pandemic rise of inflation when the cost of existing is out of control, from the public's point of view, they're hearing wealthy people who make a living playing pretend complain about work conditions. The average person doesn't want to hear that shit, even if most of the people impacted aren't actually millionaire actors. But you can thank those millionaire actors for their role in how their profession is perceived. If someone wants to be a movie star, you kind of think of it the same way you would if they said they wanted to get into politics. Who actually wants that job in today's age? A successful actor's life is never normal again after a certain point, from the open secret initiation and shaming rituals of Hollywood elites, to recent and ongoing rabbit holes like Harvey Weinstein and, adjacent to that, P. Diddy. And the idea of celebrity, with few exceptions, seems to always amplify the worst of human tendencies. Virtue signaling, trying to fit in and saying the right thing so as to not be ostracized isn't saved for famous people. It's the human condition. But celebrity status is that on a Hulk Hogan amount of steroids. For better or worse, people excuse poor behavior if it's backed up by great performance. Fair or not, star players on teams typically get the star player treatment because they'll deliver on game day. Eccentric behavior hasn't just been a staple of celebrities, it's been expected. From the antics of punk, Madonna crossing boundaries in the 80s, or David Bowie in the 70s, but we're talking about great past performers putting out generational hits. The modern Hollywood equivalent is the previously mentioned Seth Rogen preaching moral superiority on Twitter and releasing dumpster fires like Santa Inc. At least our guy Robert Downey Jr. drops a cringe bomb and then follows it up with Oppenheimer. Point being, audiences would still see movies starring annoying people if the movies were good, but they are not so no grace is given. People used to love going to the movies to see Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Julia Roberts, all actors who had periods of their careers where they could sell a movie if their name was attached. Blockbusters are more about IPs now. 
and it looks like video game adaptations are the next big trend. A celebrity people will go to the theater for just to see their latest movie? That basically doesn't exist anymore. A recognizable face is preferred, but it's not a draw. At best, audiences like to see actors in certain roles. RDJ coming back as Iron Man could probably crack a billion even if it was MCU Phase 87, but give him a Dr. Doolittle remake and you're shopping at Dollar Tree. With all that said, and even with the word cynic in the channel name, I think studios can eventually turn it around in the coming decade. Hollywood has propaganda ingrained in its business practices from industry birth, but there's a reason I have a channel discussing movies. They've successfully released pieces of media over the last century that managed to blend commerce and art into something life-altering that have touched millions of lives. That's the power of art at its best, and why it's recognized and used as such a powerful propaganda tool at its worst. But I try not to dismiss anything outright no matter the precedent. I do understand the tendency to do that with most things, especially Hollywood movies, and I'm sure we haven't seen the end of Hollywood's decay. Like I said, I don't blame anyone who isn't thinking Disney has the best interest of the audience in mind when they're pulling out the Shala Ball Silver Surfer. And I'm not asking celebrities to be role models. Just don't be cringe. When there's actual autonomy involved, I mean. I know for the foreseeable future, no one's avoiding the weird humiliation rituals, like the rumor about why John Cena was naked at the Oscars. But maybe Hollywood will stop that weird shit in the future too, and everyone can get on just being average weirdos. GG's. And killer cops must be prosecuted. They are murderers. We can turn the tide. Call out hate. Step up.